Coming up next on Adventurer, the world record holder for the highest parachute jump. Would you believe 20 miles? Don't go away. Clash, James Clash. Welcome to Adventurer, the show with guests who truly push their lives to the limits. No talking heads here, just the real deals. I'm Jim Clash. In June, Frenchman Michael Fournier attempted to break the world record for a parachute jump, only to have the balloon that was to take him 25 miles above the Earth malfunction. Reportedly, Fournier will try again later this year. He has spent over $20 million in pursuit of the record. This is a dangerous business, as our guest well knows. In 1960, Joe Kittinger took his helium balloon to 102,800 feet above the Earth and jumped out breaking the sound barrier during his fall and setting the current record for a parachute jump. Our interview with Kittinger, now 80, took place at his home in Altamonte Springs, Florida. I want you to go back. We've done this a million times. Go back to that day. We uh, left and went out to the, uh, to the uh, launch site. Now, my crew was already there, and the balloon crew was there, and the lights were on, and they were laying the balloon out and uh, getting ready to go. Um, at about uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, I started breathing 100% oxygen. Because you have to breathe oxygen to get the nitrogen out of the body. Uh, you have quite a bit of nitrogen in the body in solution. And uh, if, if you don't get rid of the nitrogen in the body as you go aloft and the pressure decreases, this bubbles with this gaseous nitrogen goes to the, uh, the elbows or the knees or the brain. Is it like the bends? It's like the bends. So then uh, I went in and started getting dressed. And it's a very lengthy dress procedure. I had to put on multiple layers of clothing. Um, but the other challenge was I could not sweat because if I was soaking wet to sweat and I went up to 100 degrees below zero, now I'm gonna freeze. Now it's the block of ice. And when I go through 40,000 feet, my pressure suit inflates. And of course, we checked on the ground and the thing was perfect. But when I got to 40,000 feet, I found out that my glove in my right hand was not inflating. Uh, also, I knew that if I told my doctor that he would abort the flight. And I had a feeling that if they aborted that flight, that I could not get permission to do it again. So I didn't tell him on the ground. I took a calculated risk. Yeah. I made the decision myself as I went along, knowing that I would probably use the use of my right hand knowing that it might be painful, knowing that I was going into an area that we had never explored before. Once I got to altitude, uh, the balloon leveled off without going any higher. That was a maximum altitude. But I wasn't quite over the drop point. So people on the ground said, well, Joe, why don't you just drift for a few more minutes until you get right over the jump point. So I drifted for 11 minutes while the balloon got right over the that jump point. So explain to me what it looks like at, at 102,800 feet above the earth. You had 11 minutes to look around. Well, it's, you can see about 400 miles every direction. The, the eye can't see the curvature. Uh, a camera can see it, uh, but the eye can't see it. And I kept looking for the curvature. But the fascinating thing was it's just black overhead. It's, the transition from the normal blue to the black, you can never describe it because it goes from a light blue to an absolute dark sky uh, as it transitions. I, uh, I was struck with the beauty of it. One, I was struck also with how hostile it is because it's hostile to man. Uh, without elaborate protection, uh, a man cannot live there. And when everything was done, I stood up, turned around to the door, took one final look out, um, said a silent prayer, and I said, Lord, take care of me now. So I rolled over, and I looked up, and here was a balloon just roaring into space. And I suddenly realized that the balloon wasn't roaring into space. I was going down at a right. fantastic right. rate. And at about 90,000 feet, I reached 714 miles an hour. The uh, altimeter is unwinding very rapidly. Uh, you, you know you're going at a fast speed. But the way you determine speed is visual. You, you see something go flashing by, but there ain't nothing flashing by at uh, 10 miles up. Yeah. There's no signpost there. There's no right. And the clouds are so far below that you can't yeah. even use that Cloud frame of reference. 10 miles below. So it's been a record now for 43 years uh, because it's not easy to do. 
uh, but somebody will beat it someday. But when they do beat it, they're not doing it for astronauts and piles of aviators. They're doing it to beat the record. How do, you, is, how do you feel about it? Oh, it'll happen, and I, but I, I can't influence one way or the other. And records are made to be busted. Will you be happy for the people who do it? Sure. I'll be, I'll be late. But also, I would be concerned uh, uh, that they're properly trained. Because yeah. if they're not, they're, they're have a heck of a risk. Again, world record parachutist Joe Kittinger. I'm Forbes adventurer Jim Clash. To read my column, pick up Forbes magazine or click on Forbes.com slash adventurer. And thanks for watching the Forbes.com video network. Clash, James Clash.